Welcome to the channel rather dubiously called Rufio. I'm the best Yugi tuber in my street, a very average player who uses this platform to trick you into thinking I'm good at and capable of playing Yu-Gi-Oh on any kind of level at all. Before we get started, why don't you hit subscribe for me, even if it's not because you secretly enjoy bad content, but because you pity me. I need every bit of help I can get. Hi guys, this is Joe here from Rufio, back with the makeshift setup once again. Uh, my missus is downstairs doing her thing, uh, and as a result, I'm recording in the bedroom, which is the least appropriate place to record in this goddamn house, yet here we are. I did want to bring you Marker Watch, but of course, there'll be no camera for the rest of the video, just for the intro and outro, because I can record these kind of quick and do my thing elsewhere. I don't really have an appropriate place to set up and record properly. But anyway, I'm waffling on, so enough of my bullshit. If this is your first time on the channel, welcome aboard. We do the UK Euro Market Watch here. Uh, taking a look on this side of the pond, we see a lot in North America and that kind of thing. I wanted to cover the European market and quite closely related to the, the UK market as a whole. So if you haven't been here before, welcome aboard. Hopefully you're going to hit subscribe and stay around with us. If this isn't your first time, here, I don't know what the fuck is wrong with you because this channel is fucking hot garbage. Yet, yeah, here you are, so I guess thank you in either case. Enough of me talking shit anyway, we'll get stuck right in to the European and UK market watch. Okay guys, so we're going for a short and sweet one for today's market watch. Unfortunately, you won't have to see my face in the top corner, so really you've got no real reason to stick around longer than you would normally but we are going to get stuck in we're going to stop talking absolute bollocks so we're going to start off with some of the charmers i wanted to cover these with the new deck coming out um and i just wanted to go ahead and see how the dual terminal versions were doing uh interestingly there's not too much going on with win the win charmer as always our standard for this is to go for english in good condition or higher at the moment we're seeing these at 149 and upwards uh, there doesn't seem to be all that much movement there is a bit of a spike there but to be honest with you that's probably just one of those weird anomalies that we do see for a short burst so win the wind charmer not really moving at the moment i do expect that these may potentially go up although it's kind of hard to see what the deck's aim really is to try and do Next up we have Heater the Fire Charmer. This one has had a bit more of a spike. In fact, it is all but bought out in English. Uh, we do have it at a minimum of €4.90. Euros and 90. It's not surprising that the Fire one is fetched a little bit more than the others. Although I think Water and Earth are probably doing okay too, for obvious reasons. We've got Alsa the Earth Charmer anywhere from 175 and upwards. But the overall trajectory is heading up unsurprisingly this is a slightly better option because of course all of these rock decks are doing the rounds but probably not as powerful as the others nevertheless dual terminal rarity 175 and up Next, we have Araya the Water Charmer, 980 and 20 euros. Those are your two options. Absolutely vanished. Unsurprisingly, with all this new water support that has been coming out, and there's a lot of hype surrounding that kind of stuff, Araya heading on up. No surprise there at all. These were 127. They have now shot up to a minimum of 9 euros and 80. For the next section of the video, I wanted to just cover some of the Legendary Duelist Season 1 singles. Uh, of course, the prices are going to be bombing on all of these. That's really unsurprising because this is what usually happens with these new sets. There are, however, a few really cool cards in this set that I did want to go ahead and take a look at and just see what they were fetching. So I wanted to start off with Millennium eyes restrict you can get this in good condition of 479 but you're looking about five euros and upwards for a secret rare printing from the new set that's not really too bad and probably something i would recommend picking up it's still an absolutely fantastic instant fusion target of course the original is probably going to hold a little bit better value but it is likely to have tanked somewhat anyway because well another printing in a higher rarity of course is going to bring that card down and that is the flavor of these legendary duelist sets that are coming out they are likely to tank the original prints that had one-offs that were expensive purely because people just couldn't get hold of them uh, and these seem like a really good way to balance that next we're looking at gear free the red eyes iron knight it wouldn't shock me if we start seeing some of the red eyes cards picking up with anticipation for dragoon coming out however you can get this for a nice cheap two euros a pop this is really cool for people who do want to play red eyes out there to be honest with you red eyes isn't all that 
sort of powerful or strong, but it is one of those weird decks that's sort of been locked in at really high price cards for no apparent reason, uh, way higher than they need to be. And this is just a really nice print of a cool card that could go into those decks, but shouldn't really have been sat as high as it was before. So again, a nice new print, two euros and above, not bad at all. It wouldn't surprise me if this one started to go up in future. I think two euros is really not a bad pickup. Next, we're looking at Red Eyes Baby Dragon. These are about four euros and upwards. This has actually held better value than most of the other cards. Really quite unsurprising, to be quite honest with you. Uh, in Secret Rare again, so just a nice, nice print in. Again, I think a lot of these cards, if you're someone that is an enthusiast for Red Eyes, it's a really good idea to pick these up. Even with these sets out, and they have tanked a lot of the prices, there's a good chance that once these sell out, we're going to start seeing those creep up again. So it may be a good idea to get these early, particularly before Dragoon drops and people start experimenting, particularly on the casual level with these kind of cards. Next, you have Red Eyes Slash Dragon, famous because of Duel Links, because it's absolutely terrible in the TCG, and it's kind of bad in Duel Links now as well, but there you go. I digress. So, we've got a nice printing of this from €3 Euros and up. Again, if you're someone that wants just a nice printing for your deck, this is a really good way to go about it. Not a bad price at all, if you ask me. €3 Euros a pop. Again, one that could easily, conceivably go up in the near future. And our last card that I wanted to touch on in Legendary Dollar Season 1 is Ancient Gear Fusion. Another one of those cards that for just no apparent reason was expensive and unsurprisingly is one of the more expensive ones that we've seen so far. Which is really strange to me because Ancient Gears are quite frankly fucking terrible. Yet here we are, €5.80 Euros and, 80 and above. Uh, again, one of these cards I fully expect will go back up in price, maybe towards the €10 Euro mark in the near coming months. For the next section of the market watch, I wanted to cover some of the kind of good cards I've been floating about and see how they're getting on price-wise. Christian Halka Fibrax, unsurprisingly scooping back up. This was under 20 euros not so long ago, and I did tell you all, when competitive play starts to resume or we get close, watch the price go up. And surprise, surprise, this card didn't get touched on the list, which people thought it would. None of its main targets got touched on the list either, so it is here to stay until at least September, which gives us another couple of months of this card. Now, if you're anticipating that your tournaments are going to be back on and you don't have this card yet, now is a good time. This is only going to to creep up expect this to head up towards the 25 mark if you ask me personally especially now that people will have stopped cracking open dual overload you need this in your deck and if it resolves you basically win uh, it's a really really important card to have available to you even if it does get hit in the near future Next up, we have Link Cross, another one that's been yo-yoing up and down. Not quite as high as it was at one point, but I do feel like this looks like it's heading up in the right direction for people that already have their copies. Now, this to me is more likely to get hit than Needle Fiber in the near future. Link Cross is absolutely broken. I don't know why Konami insists on printing these token spammers because the same thing happens time and time again. Uh, they get abused. And unsurprisingly, Link Cross falls directly into that category. 15 euros and upwards is the going rate we are seeing it gradually creep up overall predator plant vert anaconda it is baffling me baffling me that these are this low i fully expect that these are going to go up i've been calling it for a while they've continued to head down honestly though the sooner you can pick these up the better even if you lose a euro or two in the next few weeks fully expect that once red eyes dragoon drops you will need this card in your options. It's also worth noting that this kind of fell a little bit wide the wayside because of all the other cards that are doing bits. You can't really fit all of these different engines in in one go. Don't be surprised if when we see the likes of Needle Fiber and Link Cross getting hit, the Predator Plan Vert Anaconda will come to the forefront and take over as one of the most important cards you can have in your extra deck. It gives you some really good options. It works really well in loads of weird rogue builds like using Neos Fusion and stuff like that. And again, once Dragoon drops, you are going to need a single copy of this. So now probably isn't a bad time to consider picking this up. Next up, we have Celine, which has been kind of up and down. Uh, it's slightly down on what it was before, but a lot of people are using this to get quick way into Access Code Talker. So unsurprisingly, it's held a really quite good value. It's not a bad price at all, to be honest with you. Four euros a pop isn't too bad. I can see this coming down maybe in the near future, although time will tell. Next, we've got Union Carrier, weirdly coming down. I'm actually quite shocked by this because this has seen kind of an uptick in play, if you ask me, at least from my experience. Although I guess the kind of novelty of the Buster lock has worn off a little bit. People finding ways to out this really easily. Um, 
yeah, it's one of those cards that weirdly I think is coming down and I'm not sure why, to be quite honest with you. Maybe you guys have got an answer out there for me that I've not thought about. If you know why this card is heading down gradually, please do let me know. For the next part of the video, I just wanted to cover a couple of cards from Toon Chaos. Uh, we're starting off with the Chaos Creator. Of course, this is the uh, this is the only time the card's been printed, of course, in two different rarities in the set. And this price is slowly coming down. A lot of people looking to play this in kind of weird Chaos builds, which mostly at this stage are just novelty. But I do think this is actually a really good pickup to get. Maybe not at this price, maybe hold on a little bit longer. If it heads down towards the 15 euros or so mark, it might be worth a pun. It's also worth noting that this has already been crept in terms of rarity in exactly the same set. So as a result, you are likely to see these prices lower than you would have done in any other scenario. And again, it is worth noting though that people are experimenting with this in, in Chaos builds and of course the likes of Thunder Dragons and all that sort of good stuff. So if any of those pick up in the future, expect that this card will pick up too. And next I wanted to take a look at Part of Extravagance. This is absolutely wild to me. I said this last time before, this is the second print of this card and it is basically almost as expensive for Ultra Rares as it is for secrets. It's not really all that surprising when you think, I guess, about any of the good pop cards. They do hold a really good rarity, particularly, uh, sorry, really good value in, in a decent rarity. And an ultra rare isn't anything to sniff at. It is worth noting though that I'm pretty convinced that this is going to get reprinted in the tins, at which case this will absolutely bomb through the floor. It's not a bad time to cash out on these if you've got them spare. To be honest with you, if you've got anything, if you've got the secrets, they're probably worth holding. Although don't be surprised if long term we see something like an ulti printed for this card as well. And our penultimate card to cover for today's video. Nibiru, the primal being, I just wanted to see how this was getting on at the moment. It's a really, really important card in the current game uh, with how things are shifting up. A minimum of 10 euros is basically what you're looking at. Uh, for a copy of Nibiru, you do need a place set in your arsenal, just kicking around maybe in your bind or whatever, because most decks are actually beginning to main this, as we've seen in the last few weeks. Unsurprisingly, we're seeing it hold a really decent value. It has yo-yoed a little bit, but I really don't see it coming down much from where it is, if at all. Uh, and if we don't get a reprint soon, expect that this will start to creep up again. And the last card for today's Market Watch. There was some reports in the OCG of this game printed over there. So, of course, naturally people started to think maybe we're going to get a reprint soon. There's been no confirmation of that yet so far, as I know at least. Uh, but it does seem to have touched the price down. It was also worth noting that this is slightly less used that Nibiru. Uh, one of the issues with Dark Ruler No More is it just says you can't win that turn, so unless you can completely break their board and stop them coming back out, it does have its weaknesses. That is by no means to say that this is a bad card. It's fantastic, and you should have a play set in your hands. I would recommend picking this up, to be honest with you, at six euros a pop, a play set for 18 to keep in your collection. If it does get reprinted, it's most likely going to be in a lower to rarity, in which case we'll probably see this creep up. And that is it for today's UK and Euro market watch we'll be back next monday as we are every monday if there's anything that you want to see covered on these market watches absolutely just drop in and let me know i'll be more than happy to oblige you if there's any other content you want to see as well i do plenty of other stuff not just market watches deck profiles how to play videos combo videos and just all around a waste of your fucking time content at least you've got something to kill this uh, rona time here and there in any case thank you very much for checking in if you haven't already you should definitely hit subscribe and i will see you in the next one thank you for watching hopefully you've enjoyed the garbage content i put together for you enough to hit subscribe and maybe even drop a thumbs up and a comment before you go be sure to check out the links in the description to help support the people who are making this channel a possibility thanks again for checking in and i'll see you in the next one